This is 8.1b, investigating sinusoidal functions from OpenStax algebra and trigonometry. Before we go into sinusoidal functions, I want to go ahead and quickly review transformation of functions. And I know you guys did some review assignments, but I just want to go over it again just to make sure that you're solidified in that. And so if you think way back, this was, uh, this was way back in section 1.5, so it was at the beginning of the year, we had transformation of functions and we looked at how you could take a function f of x, um, and then you could transform that function by doing various things to it. So we could say that the new function, g of x, is equal to a f of b times x minus c plus d. Okay, And so we looked at what each of these things did. And so we started with just f of x, and then we added all these different components. Um, and so uh, remember, the d is a, a vertical shift and a C is a horizontal shift. And then uh, the A, we did the A next, the A was a vertical stretch or compression depending on what value was there. And then also remember uh, something special happened if this was a negative. Remember a negative caused a reflection a vertical reflection, so it would reflect over the uh, the x-axis, and then B is the horizontal stretch or compression. Also, with the um, negative, if it's a negative, causing a reflection across, but this time across the y-axis reflection. Okay, so um, if you need to review those before going on, please do. It's, it will help you so much if you remember this before moving on. So now we're going we're gonna to apply these things to sin, sinusoidal functions. What is a sinusoidal function? Well, you can see the word sine in sinusoidal, um, and you know that all at the end means like. Um, so a sinusoidal function is a function that has the same general shape as a sine or cosine function. Remember, they both have the same shape. They're just shifted from each other, and I didn't, I'm not doing that perfectly, but you get the point. Um, a sinusoidal function might be taller, though, than the basic or generic sine or cosine, or it might be shorter. Um, it could also be more compact. So it might be the peaks might be closer together or they might be farther apart. Okay, and so any of those that follow that same pattern are going to be sinusoidal functions. Uh, so here's an example. These are, this is four different sinusoidal functions. Uh, there are all variations of sine. In this case, the periods are all the same, but you can see some of them are above the x-axis, some of them are below the x-axis at certain parts. Some of them are taller, some of them are shorter, but they're all sinusoidal functions. And cosines are also sinusoidal functions because they're just shifts of sine functions. Okay, so that's important to, uh, and it's important to remember when we're talking about uh, sinusoidal functions that they all have the same basic shape. So um, let's talk about determining the period. You know what? Let's go back here. Uh, I'm going to work on this slide. Let's go to the blank one. Um, so I, what I want to do before we go into uh, the specifics is I want to relate. I want you guys to relate uh, what we had learned previously. I'm going to rewrite here the transformation formula bx minus c plus d and I'm missing there we go missing a parenthesis there um, I want to relate that to uh, sinusoidal shifts okay and so we can do the same thing with sine and cosine and so we can get that y you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna do it below so that everything lines up a little bit um, so we can get y is equal to a times the sine of bx minus c plus d and y is equal to a cosine of bx minus c plus d okay so here you can see we've taken we've taken y is equal to sine x and we've taken y is equal to cosine x and we've transformed them but notice they're the same transformations 
as in our toolkit function transformations, and they even use the same letters, except we're using uh, we're using capitals here. Okay, and so they they perform the same functions. Get all those grouped together. Okay, so um, the same the same uh, shifts or the same transformations take place. Um, the D is going to be a vertical shift. Uh, C is going to be a horizontal shift. A is going to be a vertical shrinking or uh, a vertical stretch or compression. If it's negative, it's going to cause a reflection. B is going to be a horizontal stretch or compression. If it's negative, it's going to cause a reflection across the y-axis. Okay, so keep that in mind and, and remember that we're still working with the same pieces that we worked with our, with our toolkit functions. Okay, but now you're going to apply them to uh, sinusoidal functions, sine and cosine. So let's talk about how to determine the period of sinusoidal functions. We're going to talk about period and amplitude. So first, period. Uh, horizontal stretches and compressions change the period of the function, right? So if I have, I'm just going to very roughly sketch this, if I have this, but then if I horizontally stretch it, so I move all these this way, let's, let's say that this is the y-axis, and I move all this this way, right? I'm going to get something that is looks the same I'm doing a bad job of that okay but the period is going to be different so on my original one the period goes from here to here but on my second one after I've stretched it it goes from here to here should have done that in a different color and and I can also do it the other way where I can do it like this right where the period goes from here to here okay so a horizontal stretch or compression is going to change the period of the function so how do we find the period? Um, well, in our in our um, generic equation, we had y. I'm going to just write it up here. Y is equal to a sine or cosine, but I'm going to just use sine right now. B x minus c plus d. Okay. Um, so we what we're looking for is we're looking at this b, the value of b. So whatever is multiplied by your x. B is related to the period by the equation P, which is period, is equal to 2 pi divided by absolute value of B, okay, the absolute value of B. So to find the period, you, you, need, you need to just take the positive of that B. If it's a negative, remember that we know that negative is going to cause a reflection, um, but it's not going to change, uh, it's not going to change the period, and you can't have a negative period, so that's why we take the absolute value. And so whatever's in that B, you're going to divide into 2 pi. Because remember, 2 pi is the natural period of, of y is equal to sine x and y is equal to cosine x. Because 2 pi is equal to one whole circle. Okay, And so that's why we divide it into 2 pi. Um, so let's look at... Let's look at this. So here we have in orange, I'm going to try to keep my pens the same as theirs. In orange, we have the generic uh, y, or y or f of x is equal to sine x. And so we have the period is from 0 to 2 pi. That's one whole cycle of the sinusoidal wave. But then, I'm going to get some dark blue, make sure my dark blue is visible here. Um, then we get f of x is equal to sine of 2x. So what is our b here? our b is equal to 2. So let's find the period. The period is equal to 2 pi divided by absolute value of b, which is absolute value of 2, which is 2. And so the period is equal to pi. So let's look on our graph. So it starts here, and it goes up, and then down, and then back to its original spot, right at pi, where we'd expect it to be. And then if we go another pi, we have another repetition of that cycle. So within the length of one cycle of sine x, sine of 2x has two whole cycles. It goes from here to here, and then it goes from here to here. Um, so that, that number 2, uh, even though it's uh, above 1, because it, you're dividing it into 2 pi, the larger the number, the, the smaller the period is going to be. 
Conversely, let me see if I can get more of a greenish color here. Conversely, if we have sine um, of x over 2, our b is equal to 1 half, right, because x is multiplied by 1 half to get x over 2. And so our period is equal to 2 pi divided by absolute value, it's positive, so we're, we don't need to worry about that, 1 half, which is going to be 2 pi times 2, which equals 4 pi. Okay, so one period is 4 pi. We only have 2 pi on, on this graph, which means we can't fit a whole, we can't fit a whole period on here. And so here you get from 0 to 2 pi is half of the wave, and then if it kept going to 4 pi, you would get the other half of the wave, something like that. So it would be roughly over here, 4 pi. Okay, so if the, the smaller the b is, not smaller, if b is less than 1, it's going to stretch the wave and make the period bigger. If b is above 1, it's going to compress the wave and make the period smaller. So let's go ahead and write this in a more organized way. So the period of sinusoidal functions. If we let c equal 0 and d equal 0, so that was that's in reference to y is equal to a sine of bx minus c plus d. Okay, so if we're saying that there's no there's no uh, vertical shift and there's no horizontal shift, um, then um, so that we don't have to worry about those. If we let c equal 0 and d equal 0 in the general form equations of the sine and cosine functions, we obtain the forms y is equal to a sine of bx and y is equal to a cosine of bx. Okay, and the period the period is 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b. Okay, um, so you need to you need to understand how to get the period from a function that look, a, a function equation that looks like this. And so then let's go ahead and write if b is greater if b is greater than one if it if b is one there's not going to be any shift the stretch or compression, right? Um, so if b is greater than 1, we saw on the previous page, you get horizontal compression, which means you have a shorter period. If b is less than or equal, or sorry, not, not equal to, if b is less than 1, you have horizontal stretch. which leads to a longer period. Okay, so this one is, is one that's counterintuitive because if it's larger than one, the period's gonna get shorter. If it's greater than one, the period's gonna get longer. Okay, so don't get confused about that. Let's do an example. Uh, if we have um, determine the period of the function, f of x is equal to sine of pi over six x. And we just, all we want is the period. We're just, oh, sorry. Okay, we're just looking for the period. So we pull out our period formula. Period is equal to 2 pi over the absolute value of b. Okay, so in this case, our b is pi over 6, right? Our b is whatever is multiplied by x. So 2 pi divided by, and we're already dealing with positive, so we don't need to worry about the absolute value bars. We're going to divide by pi over 6. When we're dividing by a fraction, we rewrite it as multiplication. 2 pi times the reciprocal of pi over 6, which is 6 over pi. And then we can cancel the pi's and we get 12. So the period of f of x is equal to sine of pi over 6x is 12. So that means on your from 0 to 12, let's see if I can do this, there would be your, your, one, your one whole cycle of that wave. Okay, I'm going to put up a triad problem. 
Um, determine the period of the function, g of x is equal to cosine of x over three. Now, if this confuses you, you can think of it as this way, cosine of one third x. Okay, so maybe that'll help you. So pause the video and then come back to make sure you did it correctly. So let's go ahead and rewrite our period formula. P is equal to two pi over absolute value of B. In this case, our B is positive, right? B is equal to one third. So we're not gonna worry about the absolute value bars. Two pi o divided by one third. And when we're dividing by a fraction, we rewrite as a multiplication problem. Two pi times three over one is two pi times three. So our period is six pi. So what this tells us is that this is way stretched out. The period is, uh, remember a normal period, cosine of x, the normal period would be two pi, um, but this is six pi, so it's three times as long as just the generic cosine function. Okay, so that is the period of a sinusoidal, sinusoidal function. So now we're gonna go into amplitude. And we didn't, um, amplitude is a new, uh, is new for us, even though we've talked about transformations, we haven't talked about amplitude. Amplitude is vertical height from the midline. And so if I were to kind of sketch this out, we'd have something like this. The amplitude would be this here, from here to here, from the midline, from the midline of that wave. So the, the orange one would have that amplitude if I went like this. So the, this amplitude would be larger than the orange one. Okay, so that's what amplitude is. Um, the vertical midline is the line between the min, maximum and minimum values. Okay, so you take your maximum value, you take your maximum value, let me switch colors here take your maximum value and your minimum value and right in between in between those is your midline. Now, um, for to start with, that midline is, is going to be the x-axis, but it won't always be the x-axis, right? If we shift this, if we vertically shift this function up or down, then the midline is not going to be the axis. So keep that in mind. Um, the amplitude is given by, um, is given by the Let's see, sorry, I lost my place in my notes. The amplitude is given by, uh, I don't know how to say this, amplitude, we'll just do that, amp, um, is equal to the absolute value of a in our generic function, right? So we had y is equal to a sine of bx minus c plus d, right? So we take our a and whatever the absolute value of that is, that's our amplitude. Okay, that tells you how far above and how far below. Um, that remember, if it's negative, that negative just means it's a reflection and that doesn't affect the amplitude, how far it is away it is from the um, x or y axis. So that's why we take the absolute value. Um, so let's look, at, let's look at some of this graphically. So here we go. Here is, um, let's see, in purple or dark blue, whatever you wanna call that. We have the generic f of x is equal to sine x. We're not used to seeing the one there, but that's what it means, right? We could get rid of that one. f of x is equal to, to sine x. But then if we put a two in front of it, if our a equals two, which is the orange one, then it's twice as high. So the, the peak point of our generic one is at one, but our peak point of two sine x is two. In the lighter blue, we have three. It's three times as tall as the generic. And then in the red, it's four times as tall. So you can see that there's a direct correlation between this number in front of your sine or cosine and how tall that function is going to be when it's graphed. So let's go ahead and define amplitude of sinusoidal functions. If we let c equal zero and d equal zero in the general form equations of the sine and cosine functions, then we obtain the forms y is equal to a sine of bx and y is equal to a cosine of bx. and the amplitude is a, the vertical height from the mid, 
um, sorry, the amplitude is A, the vertical height from the midline is uh, absolute value of A. So um, that's, so you don't have to plug A into any formulas, you just have to take the absolute value of it. Um, so what does this mean as far as um, which direction it goes? Well, if A, if the absolute value of A is greater than one, then you get a vertical stretch, vertical stretch, and we saw that in the slide below with four, when A was four, it was huge. Um, if A is less than one, then you get a vertical compression. So this one is, is intuitive in that uh, if your A is bigger, if your absolute value of your A is bigger, then it's going to make the graph bigger as far as top and bottom. And it, if it, your A is smaller, it's going to make it small, the graph smaller. So let's do an example. What is the amplitude of the sinusoidal function f of x is equal to negative 4 sine x? And is the function stretched or compressed vertically? So what we're being asked is what is the amplitude? And then is it being stretched or compressed? Okay. Um, and so we know that the amplitude is the absolute value of a. Okay. In this case, our a is negative. What does that negative mean? Remember, it means that it's a reflection. So if we were to graph this, so sine normally, sine normally graphs like this through the y-axis, but because it's negative and because it's four, it's going to be a uh, different height, but it's going to reflect, it's going to go this way instead. Okay, it's going to be a reflection like that. Okay, so absolute value of negative four which is equal to four. So the amplitude is four. Now, is this stretched or compressed? Well, we know that if the absolute value of A is greater than one, which it is here, then that means it is stretched. Okay, so it doesn't matter that that negative is there, right? That, that goes away with the absolute value. That's why we do the absolute value. And so this is, this is stretched. So let me see if I can, um, if the, the ones that I did up above, if we look at um, the pink one as a quick sketch of sine x, and we look at the green one as a quick sketch of negative sine x, then let's see, let's pick pink, then negative four sine x, it would still cross at the same points, but it would go four times as high, and I'm, I ran out of room on there, and it would go four times as low, four times as high, four times as low, like that. Kind of like that, but hopefully you get the idea. It's, we're stretching that graph out uh, vertically. Um, so here, here is a drawing of it, better than I did, um, but you can see how it's stretched a lot taller. Okay, so let's look at the try it that you're going to do. What is the amplitude of the sinusoidal function f of x is equal to one half sine x? Is the function stretched or compressed vertically? So remember, you're looking for the absolute value of a to find your amplitude. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and try it and then come back. So the absolute value of a is equal to absolute value of one half, which is equal to one half. So our amplitude is one half, which means it's less than one. So is this a stretch or a compression? Because it's less than one, we know that it is compressed. So if we were to take um, this graph from the previous one, we know that it would be, um, let me draw in the, uh, the regular sine function. So the regular one hits here, and then it hits back again over here, here. So the regular sine function looks kind of like that. Okay, so that's sine of x. Now in another color, I'll do uh, one half sine x. Okay, so one half sine x, it's, it follows the same, the same, but the high points are only at one half instead of one, and the low points are at negative one half instead of negative one. And so you get the same period. It has a, it's this, each wave is the same length, but it's a much shorter wave as far as vertically. 
Okay, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I know this is really confusing and I'm, I'm sorry that we have to do it this way uh, virtually. If, please reach out to me with questions. I'd love to help you guys out. Check Google Classroom for your assignments.